welcome everyone in last lecture we saw how to store a very little amount of data using shared preferences and we also saw how to store data using files today we will learn how to store data using the sqlite database that is available with android devices and with android operating system sqlite database is a lightweight database version of the normal sql databases so if you are familiar with sql databases you will find some of that knowledge useful here as well let us get started as you know the most important thing in a database is the schema a schema is nothing but how a data is organized so we will see that how to create a good schema and how to reflect that stream and that schema in the sql statements that we use so in a sql database just like sql databases we have we will have a schema which will be reflected in our sql statements and we will also have a contract class the contract class here explicitly specifies the layout of our schema in a systematic and sort documenting way so that looking at the contract class can give us an intuition about what kind of schema that we are using so for example the contract class is used as a container for constants that define name for uris tables columns so if we go through these names we can understand that what kind of tables columns uris are present in our database and because we are using a contract class we can use the same constants across other classes in the same package so here is a very simple example uh, suppose this is the table that we want to store in our program now this table has four fields one is a uuid one is a title one is a date one is a sort field there is also a id field which we would ideally like to get automatically generated now in this you can see that we have to store these four values uid title date and sort so for example this could be our schema where we can say that there is a final string uid and title and date and sort and these are the values that it holds now if i look at it i can very easily see that what kinds of uh, columns i am going to have because by just by looking at this i can say that you know in the my column entries would be divided into uid title date and so on so a good way to organize a contact class is to put definition that are global to your whole database in the root level of the class so once you do this then that is accessible to everything else in your uh, program and then for each table we create an inner class so just like here this was one of the table of our database and for this one of the table we created an inner class or we can see the example here for one so this is our uh, top level class and then for each class and then for each table we create an inner class So just like here. Now, what uh, Android also provides us that we can implement an interface called base columns, and this will automatically give us the primary key field underscore ID. So as you saw earlier, we were ignoring it because we knew that we can get it directly by just implementing the base columns interface. Now you can see that. for each table we will be creating an inner class try to think that why do we do this what is the advantage of it and what is the disadvantage of it your hint is to think that what is the advantage of having an inner class in java and why do we have inner class in java if you can think in that direction you can think what the advantage of this approach is now let us look at creating a database through some basic example we will try to create the same database that we are creating that is 
we would like to have a entry called title and an entry called subtitle so let's first initialize few things as you will see in these examples that mainly we are trying to run sql statements so that's how our database works so let's start from the beginning we have a static final string text type then a comma separator then a string called sql create entries in that we are giving commands such as like create table as you know that this is a, a valid command and then we are entering the table name some more values and then we have our column name title and column name subtitle which we earlier choose column name title and column name subtitle and similarly we have the sql statement for deleting the table which is called dropping a table uh, as we know from our sql knowledge now let's look that how do we uh, actually create it so we will go through this code the only thing that we need to do is to extend few functions so one of the method that we need to definitely extend is the on create okay so here again we have a static in database version and then we can have a database name feed, feed reader uh, here for example then feed reader db helper nothing we need not to do anything we are only concerned about this method called on create and what are we doing in on create we are executing the sql of this string which we set up in our last slide sql create entry so this is our this is our sql command that we want to execute on the on create so this sql command is equivalent to saying create table give the table name we have the table name here and then create the table entry id integer primary key and then gives the column name title and sub title and subtitle okay so this method when it runs it creates the uh, it runs the sql command and it creates our database similarly we can extend the method called on upgrade and on downgrade which upgrade and downgrade our database as we know from our database knowledge so uh, just to revise we create a sub subclass that overrides on create on upgrade on open callback methods we just saw the on create use here and here our class is feed reader db helper which is a subclass of sqlite open helper and that's it that's all is needed to create a sqlite database in android now let's look another example of accessing the database and writing to it so we go to our class object we create a class object we need a db helper we get the data data repository in write mode so from our mdb helper we get the write table database so now our database is in the right mode after that what we will do is that we will create a map of values and then we will insert this into our database so our map of values refers to the each row and then we will be inserting these rows so as you know that we had only two entries title and subtitle title and subtitle so our map will also have only these two values so we are putting feed entry dot column and title title and subtitle subtitles now we have put these two values and then so we now have a row created separately and we now want to insert this row into our database so now we do a simple db dot insert in which we give the table name null means that do nothing if there is if the map is not correct or if the map is not valid and then we insert the map which we created earlier so essentially what we are doing is that we are inserting a row with values given in the values map into this table name now after this line our 
database will have a new row with the values entered there. So it, it is really very simple to create a database and write to it. Now suppose we want to read. As you know that in databases, whenever we want to read, we have to signify that how, what we want to read. So we have to give a criteria of reading. And then we will have to also show that how do we want to see the information that we have just read. So for example, uh, to start with, we will uh, start with our database. We will get the readable version. So last time, if you remember, we had got the writable. Now we are getting a readable. And then we will define a projection that is specifies. So we define a projection that is specifies which column from the database. And uh, let's see. But this projection will be used only after this query. So what we want, we want the title and the subtitle with respect to a particular ID. Now we want, so our criteria is that we want to get the value of all the rows where the title's value is equivalent to my title. So that's our where. Uh, those of you who have done database, and I believe that every one of you have done database, knows that this is a very simple way to get anything from a SQL database. Then our spring selection, we simply initialize. After that, we give an argument. Then in the next slide, we define our sorting order. We are saying to return it in the descending sorting order. Then we do the query. So when we do the query, we get the result into what we call as a cursor. So let's see what is our query. We give the table name. That's the table name that we want to query. We give the projection. That is the column that we want to get returned. We give the columns from the for the where clause and the values for the where clause. That is what we described here the where clause, okay, the columns and the values, columns and the values. So here we give the column and here we give the values. And then we don't want to group the rows or we don't want to filter by the row groups. And then we define the sort order that we declared as descending. Once we get this cursor, we can start reading from the cursor. So now this will contain all the values where the title is equal to my title. So as you can see that it is very easy to create a database, read it and write it. Now let us see a very simple way of creating a SQL SQLite database. So updating a SQLite database again is very easy. We get our database instance and we will have to create new values for one column that will be the column that we want to update so just earlier as in case of writing we are doing we create a value we do a value put and after that we again define the criteria that which column we want to update so we define a selection criteria and selection arguments and then we do a db update where we give the table name the value that we want to update and the columns that we want to update based on the Writing. So this will update our call. If you want to delete, this is again very easy. We have to just find out the right columns to delete and then we can issue the delete command. Again, as you see that the selection, selection arcs are here given. Let's quickly go back and revise how we have been using them. So we started using them from the read. So the selection was giving us the column name title. And the selection argument was giving us the values inside that column. And this is the similar way that we want to use it everywhere. So when we wanted to read uh, uh, all the values where the title was equal to my title, we gave it in the read. When we wanted to update where title was my title, we gave it an update. And we want to delete where title is my title, we do the delete. So this was all about using an SQLite database. Uh, using SQLite database or using files is your choice. Both have their pros and cons. So whether you should use a files or a SQLite, you should first ask them what kind of data are you going to save. If there is no structure in the data, for example, there is no way you can 
create a table out of your data, then it is good to just store a file. But if there's a structure in the data, then it may be good to use the SQLite database. Thank you.